pray. It's time to watch over our own souls and to pray and begin to seek the Lord like never before. Last time I ministered, it was on the, the uh, secret place. And again, the Lord was reiterating, watch and pray. Because if we don't watch, if we don't pray, things will be happening around us. And something will come up and surprise us. And we'll be in this place of, of uh, Lord, where in the world's going on? What's happening? And we, and our emotions and everything will run away with us. And the thought life will run away with us. And we, we won't even know where, what planet we're on because we haven't watched and prayed. So from that picture, we're going to take a, I want you just to see this picture. It's Passover. We're going to talk about Jesus. It's Passover. Jesus is preparing, had his disciples prepare a room. They're preparing a meal. And as we go through all the Gospels, you get almost this complete picture of each one telling from their vantage point. Remember this movie, from each vantage point, each person saw something. And so from this vantage point, each one is telling a story and how they saw it from their perspective. But as Passover, Jesus is meeting with his disciples. He's instructing them. And he says to um, his disciples to go get the place. He talks to them and they're not hearing what Jesus is saying. He's saying, I'm getting ready to die tonight because it's in the evening. And he says, I'm getting ready to leave you guys and all of you guys are going to be scattered. But they weren't hearing what the Lord is saying. I know I'm teaching, watch and pray. And you're still not hearing what I'm saying. And it's a picture, it's a, it's a real picture of what was happening then. It's kind of happening now. And it's going to happen to, the, to us. And so to hear what Jesus was saying, the disciples needed to be paying attention. And so he's telling them, I'm going to die. And I'm going to be separated from you. And all you guys are going to be scattered. And they're like, yeah, 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 Jesus, you know. So Jesus takes and he takes off his garment. This is John, John's account of his part of it. And John has this account where Jesus, he adds it into the other gospels, don't have it. But Jesus takes off his garment. He begins to wash his disciples' feet. And he tells them, do you know what I've done? have done a picture. Now, Peter, that loves Jesus, might be greatly. He's the ostentatious one, you know, out there. I love you, I love you, you know, I love Jesus. And he says to Jesus, when Jesus wants to wash his feet, he said, oh, you're not going to wash my feet. And he said, if you, don't, if you don't let me wash your feet, now this is really important. If you don't let me wash your feet, you're not going to have no part in me. And it, he loved Jesus so much. Hey, Jesus, wash my hands, my feet, my head, everything. Just wash me all over. Because he loved Jesus. All of the disciples loved Jesus. Jesus says to them, and I'm going to read out of the Amplified, because I think the Amplified really breaks it down. In John 13, 14. And this is um, what Jesus says to them. He says, If I then, your Lord and teacher and master, have washed your feet, you ought, it is your duty, you are under obligation, you owe it to wash one another's feet. What was the picture that Jesus was painting to his disciples? That when I go away, when I'm crucified, be crucified, everywhere you step is where the enemy owns. What did the Lord said to Satan? The dust you shall eat. What is he eating? He's eating your dust. Your fleshly moments, your carnal moments. That's the dust of your feet. And Jesus was washing the disciples' feet and washing carnality, washing flesh off of them. And the Lord is saying that we're obligated to do that one to another. We're supposed to wash carnality away from one another when we see it. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm painting a picture, washing it off. Now, if I was to sit here and wash your feet right now, you would think, oh, this is so wonderful. It is so beautiful. Have you ever had your feet washed? It's like, oh, I feel so loved. I feel so loved. Oh, she loved me so much she got down on her knees and she washed her feet, washed my feet. But if I was to tell you, you got to stop being bitter, you got to stop being angry, that doesn't feel too good, right? 
But that's what Jesus was doing. He was washing away the dust. Remember that Jesus in Genesis has said that he will bruise your heel, but you will crush his head with your feet. It was a picture that Jesus was showing his disciples in the beginning of this picture that wherever you walk on this earth, I call it a tar pit. I've seen earth in the spirit. It's like a tar pit. It's living in a tar pit. Everywhere we walk and be a part of, moment by moment, we're living in a tar pit. We have to get our feet washed. And we ought to wash each other's feet. And that was the first picture that Jesus began to tell his disciples. And then he goes on from there. He washed his disciples' feet. I want y'all to read John, John 18, on your own time. But John just gives, boy some lessons that the Lord was teaching that the other Gospels didn't tell because, of course, he was asleep. So he, he just moves right into Jesus was taken, I think, in the 18th <clears throat> verse. We start from, like, the 13th chapter to read. It's like a, all, this picture of Jesus was prepared, what Jesus was preparing his disciples with was just awesome with the things that the Lord was telling them about the kingdom of the heaven and everything else. But we're going to read Matthew 26, 36, and 46, 36 through 46. And it says, then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane. Now we're in Gethsemane. The picture is now he's had, he's had Passover. He's washed the disciples' feet. He's given them some things to do. Now his soul is, is unto death. He's like his heart is broken. And, of course, at Passover he tells his disciples that one of you are going to deceive me. It's really something interesting I saw about that. He said that he took a morsel of bread and he dipped it in a bowl and he gave it to the one that was going to deceive him. Remember, all the disciples loved Jesus. All of us here in this room love Jesus. Some of us will say, Jesus, I we just said it. Lord, I'll lose my life. I was singing that song and said, Lord, I don't want to be like Peter who said he'll lose his life. And the moment time trouble comes, it's like, hey, I don't even know Jesus. What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know him. You know, it was this place that all the disciples were, but trouble was coming. Troubles was coming. And so he takes the morsel and the very communion, the one he was communion with, he gave it to, this is in John, he gives it to Judas and he says, go ahead and do what you're going to do, do it quickly. And do you know how much Judas uh, portrayed Jesus? We'd say 30 pieces of silver, but the Amplified says it was $21.60. Wow. To our generation, that's not much, but probably to them that was a lot. But he, paid, bring, uh, he betrayed the Lord for so little. And he communed with Jesus. And so many people in the house of the Lord that are communing with the Lord, if they don't learn to watch and pray, they're going to be just like Judas. They're going to flee, and they're going to betray the king of glory, the one whom they say that they love. And the reason why is because they haven't learned to wash their feet. They haven't learned to let Jesus in and to wash, let Jesus wash your feet. So many of us have a gospel of convenience, gospel to be nice, but the whole important, the last thing that Jesus left his disciples was wash your feet. And we're going to look at this picture. So I want you to see the Passover. Now Jesus is going into the garden. Jesus is troubled. He's troubled because he can sense death coming. And the death was the death of his flesh. And many times we're going to be asked to get the death of our flesh on the cross. So here it comes in Matthew 26, and we're starting at verse 36. Then Jesus came with them to the place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And he took him, and he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, which is James and John, and began to grieve and, and distress. And he then said to them, My soul is deeply grieved to the point of death. Remain here and keep watch with me. Jesus was watching. What was he watching for? His soul. His soul was grieved unto death. That human man part of him was in grief about what he had to go through. And he went a little beyond them and fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father... If it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as, you, not as I will, but as you will. 
And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, this is really interesting, he says it to Peter, yet James and John is there. He says to Peter, so you men could not keep watch with me for one hour? And then he says, keep watching and praying that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Jesus was saying there that Peter's spirit was willing. Peter's spirit was willing, like he said. He said, you're going to, back there the Passover, he says, all of you are going to leave me. And Peter said, no, Lord, I wouldn't leave you. I'm going to go to death with you. And, but he wasn't listening. And Jesus said, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. Peter was like, oh, no, I would not do that, Lord. And we know that he did. Mm -hmm. But, Lord, I would not do that. His spirit was willing, but his flesh, his carnal man, his carnal nature was weak. And Jesus in Gethsemane is a picture of Jesus' weak, carnal nature, watching before the Lord for his own soul. So when the Lord is saying watch and pray, it's not talking about watch over everyone else. It's talking about watch over you. That's the picture. Jesus was watching over his own self so that he would have the power, so that he would have the authority, so that he would have the strength to go through what he was about to go through. If we don't watch, if we don't pray, things are going to come upon us and we will deny the very Lord of glory whom we say that we love. All of the sight. I love John. John really talks about Philip asked some questions, different disciples, and he was answering them and telling them all a lot of questions, and all of them loved him. They loved him. I believe even Judas loved him. That's why he went out and killed himself. But we, if we don't watch, if we don't pray and watch for our own selves, so that's why we say praying in the Holy Spirit, building ourselves up on our most holy faith, because our flesh, the places where we walk, causes us to be weak. And if we don't strengthen our inner man, if we don't strengthen that man through prayer, through prayer, through seeking him and spending time with him, a day is coming. And it's probably already here that the very thing we would not do, we wind up doing because we haven't watched and prayed. So then keep watching and praying. I read that and I started at 42. And he went away again a second time and prayed, saying, My father, if this cannot pass away unless I drink it, your will be done. There's things in your life, there's trouble that may come in your life that will not pass away until you drink it. There's troubles that are coming. I look at what Debbie went through and what she had to go through, through everything that she got. It was a cup that she had to drink. It was something that, and it, we were praying, Lord, go away, Lord. Why did this happen, Lord? It was a cup that she had to drink from the Lord, and it will not go away. So then at that place is, Lord, not your will. Not my will, but your will be done. Steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. Everything in your life is ordered. Everyone that's here, everyone that's listening is ordered by the Lord. Are we hearing what the Lord said? The disciples, they weren't listening. And because they weren't listening and didn't have the ability to hear, they kept falling asleep. See, the Lord was with them. The Lord was amongst them. They were at peace. It's like a, you know, like a wean baby. Oh, the Lord is saying that, but you know what? He always goes to Gethsemane and pray. That's his prayer spot. That's, that's his secret place. Remember last time I talked about the secret place? He's always in the secret place. I'm tired. I want to go to sleep. They weren't listening to what was said hours earlier at Passover, what Jesus was saying. And he said, and he came and found them sleeping. Their eyes were heavy with sleep. And he left them again a third time. It took three times. And again, he talked about it. He went away and prayed a third time, saying the same thing once more. So three times he asked the Lord, Lord, if it's your will, let this cup pass. Let this death pass, Lord. So what, what are we doing when we're praying? Lord, if you will, I'm in a hard place, Lord. My heart is broken. Let this cup pass, Lord. 
Let it pass, Lord. Let it go away, Lord. And we pray about things and they don't change. But maybe that is your place to the cross. And if they don't change, it's Lord, let not my will, Lord, but your will be done. Father, what are you doing inside of me? What are you building inside of me? What are you making inside of me? But Jesus had to go to the cross. He had to go there for you and I. And he was willing. There's things that we go through in our lives that are just so horrific. That's the time we need to be watching and praying and we need to have a spirit of discernment. There's been so many things that I've seen in the spirit and I have to tell you, in my own self, I see it, but I need to have done more prayer about it because God would have given me the answer to it. There's things that Seymour and I have come in to play this, this week that we're hearing and there's things that I saw. And I just, because I love people, I don't say anything. And I thought, well, you know, that can't be true. No, that's them. They, they, they can't, that can't be true. But what the Lord was showing me was true because what I was watching, I was seeing, but I wasn't praying about it so that I could get a greater answer so that maybe I could have washed some feet. See, there's things that we see in each other and we don't speak up to it. And the Lord said, it is your obligation to watch and pray with each other, to watch each other and to pray. And it said, then it came to the disciples and said to them, are you sleeping and resting? Are the church asleep? Are we asleep and resting? Jesus loves me. I love Jesus. Everything's going to be okay. We're just in this la la land. And the Lord is speaking through his prophets. He's speaking through the pastor. And he's saying, watch and pray. Watch and pray. Are we just like the disciples? They didn't hear Jesus. And then Jesus said, The hour is at hand. The Son of Man is being betrayed into the hot hand of sinners. Get up and let us be going. Behold, the one who betrays me is at hand. The time now was either they had watched or they had prayed because something different was happening, something that was kind of scary for the disciples. And as you know, they came up with the clubs. It says they came up with clubs and everything. And Jesus was saying, man, I was in the temple every day. Y'all could have just took me. Now you come and the high priest servant's ear gets cut off and all the disciples, soop, they scatter. If they had prayed, they would have been able to stay there with Jesus. But Jesus said it was this uh, prophecy that the shepherd will be struck and the flock, the shepherd, and the, and the sheep will fly away. And that's what happened. All of them left Jesus alone because they didn't watch and pray. And so the next scene that takes place, okay, it says, I wanted to read it, uh, 41 in the Amplified. All of you must keep awake, awake, give strict attention, be cautious and active. And watch and pray that you may not come into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. It's the flesh part of you. The greater one, whoever is greater, is the ruler. And if your spirit man rules, Jesus' spirit man was the greater. He was able to go to that cross. He was able to yield. But if your soulish, carnal nature is stronger, that's the one that's going to rule. That part of you will cause you to betray the Lord. That part of you will cause you to walk away from the Lord. That part of you will cause you not to follow Jesus in the greater, even though we love him with all of our heart and we say that we won't and will. So we know what happens. Jesus is taken away. Peter, the others scatter. Peter, he stands close in and he's close by and he, um, he's watching this picture. And one of the girls come up and say, because he's warming himself by the fire, and he's looking at Jesus, and they say, oh, you're a Galilean. You look, you're one of his disciples. And the man that loves Jesus so much says, oh, no. See, he hadn't prayed. He hadn't prayed and watched. And what happened to his soul? Oh, I don't know him. Read it in John. I mean, John gets real explicit with what he says. And the next one, next he... Goes up and he says, oh, I don't know him. And then the third time, 
he starts cursing. I mean, he wanted to change the language because he said, you, you talk like the Galileans. And he starts changing his language and the real flesh carnal man comes out and he says, huh, he starts cursing. I don't know that man. And then he hears the cock crows. Could you imagine what Peter felt like? What lesson went in him at that moment? Because it probably was a dagger in his heart. And so many times when we fail the Lord and we're going through a hot, fiery trial at that moment and cursing comes out of our mouth or anger comes out of our mouth and bitterness comes out of our mouth, that's us denying Jesus because at that moment we didn't have power and authority. We weren't watching, we weren't playing and flesh came up and it rose up and it took away what was so precious to us. It took it away. And as we know, Peter had to be restored three times with Jesus cooking the fish. Jesus comes to him and cooks the fish and the smell. You know, your nose has no filter to your brain. And remember, he was over a fire warming his hands. And so what happens to your brain is that memory was burned inside of him, of him, him uh, betraying Jesus, that I didn't know him. And Jesus had to use the same method to restore it, lest the enemy would have had a place in his brain. God had to heal it through the same mechanism of put, cooking fish over fire and say, Peter, lovest thou me? See, the Lord was restoring the love. Peter, lovest thou me? Peter, feed my sheep. Feed my lambs. Feed them, Peter. The Lord had to restore that back. But because he had watched and prayed, Watching and praying is so important. I wrote something that says, the enemy is looking to crucify us and take away our prize. That's what the enemy is looking to do to us. He's looking to take away our prize through condemnation. He works with our emotions in the midst of hurt and confusion of our hearts. And in the midst of all that, the enemy comes and take it away. It was the enemy. Jesus had said earlier in John, he said, the, the prince of this world is coming, but he doesn't have nothing inside of me. See, that's when we've got to get to the place when we watch and pray. Let the Lord remove Satan's grasp inside of us. He has nothing to grab inside of me, what John says in John. The enemy has nothing in me. So when they came to get him, he acted like the Lord of glory. He went to the cross holy. Jesus said, pick up your cross daily and follow me. If we don't watch and pray, we're not going to be acting like Jesus, but we're going to be acting like that Adamic carnal man. We must pray and watch for our own souls. This is, all, this is all about watching for your own souls. Peter, James, and John, what Jesus was teaching them in this object lesson you've got to watch for your souls to be able to make this journey that's coming ahead. So I'm going to read in Ephesians 6 and 10 because it was the evil genius that came against Jesus. In Ephesians 6, 10 and 18 it says, Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. Seymour and I were, interesting, we were driving home, and Seymour and I kept smelling this horrible, stinky smell in the car. Well, because we were going through fields, we were thinking that it must have been something, you know, uh, with, the, with the land stinking. And it would come, and then we would get this kind of like uneasy feeling was going on inside of us. It was like an uneasy, I don't know what, what you would call it, but we just felt, both felt uneasy. And it was working on our flesh. See, if Satan doesn't have any way in you, he can't attack you. But he, but he came and he had some stuff in us. And Seymour and I started being like little, you know, <laughs> on each other. And, and after a while, we thought, wait a minute. And then it came again, and then it happened again. And it came again, and it happened again. Finally, see, we weren't watching. We weren't paying attention. So I'm not I'm saying that I'm doing this and you're doing that. No, Seymour and I weren't doing it. We weren't watching. And the Lord had just told us to watch and pray. And that was that was the next, that was that morning I had woken up. This had happened. We were driving home and we weren't watching. We weren't paying attention. We weren't alert. And the enemy came again and the same thing happened. And the enemy came, I 
past it and we said, wait a minute. Every time we smell that smell, something happens in the spirit here that and we start feeling yucky inside. And he said, and so we were, we were driving toward Debbie's and we smelt it. Same smell came in the car. And we started rebuking that devil and binding him in the name of Jesus and taking authority over him because we had learned to watch and pray. Amen. We had learned something had shifted in the spirit that was not the Lord. And that's what I'm talking about. Something shifts in the spirit like you're walking in peace, everything's okay, and then all of a sudden a shift comes. And you don't know where it came out of nowhere. God is training you, okay, it's time to watch and pray. Because the, the evil spirits are coming after you. That's what I'm trying to say. The evil spirits are going to come after the church like never before. They're going to come after you. And you got to watch and you got to pray. Because there's a blessing at the end. There's a blessing coming. Amen. <laughs> For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers. So your struggle is not against with the person that you're fighting with. The, your, your wife, your husband, your family member, your co-worker, the people that you're... Your struggle is not with them. It's not with flesh and blood, with what you can see. But it's against rulers, against powers, against forces of darkness, against spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places, and they're coming for you. Therefore, take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist in the evil day, having done everything to stand, stand firm. Do you know when you're in the midst of an argument to walk with the fruit of the Spirit, you're standing. And I can see the gold coins. I always say the only time to buy gold is the time that you are so upset and your emotions are off the charts and you're about ready to explode. Your head's going to like in the air and I can see the gold coins. It's like, okay, I can get gold right now. I, I advise you, buy for me gold refined in the fire and you stand and you just say, okay, Jesus. So you've got to remember the word. If you're watching and praying, you're remembering the word of the Lord. You're putting it ever before you. You're, I have a scripture that says here that if we are his disciples, let me see, let me read it here because it's a really good scripture. That Jesus said this. He said, um, they're asking in John. John 14, 21, 24, Jesus is talking about, because they're talking about they love him so much. And this is the hour that we love him so much. This is how love is perfected. The person who has my commandments and keep them is the one who really loves me. So at the moment we're about to explode, if we remember, what did he say? I have this is developing the fruit of the spirit. I mean, the one who loves me is a test of love. Right at that very moment, you're in a test. Who really loves me right at this moment? Are you going to give me? Are you going to buy the gold? I, 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 uh, what it says, I advise you to buy gold refined in the fire. You're upset. You're angry. Do you love me right now? Because this is crucifixion time really loves me and whoever really loves me will be loved by my father and I too will love him and show him reveal manifest myself to him so if you want to have a manifestation of the Lord let the refinement take place let the feet be washed let what you're going through happen so that you can so the Lord can reveal himself to, to you I will, I will let myself be clearly seen by him and make myself real to him. Is God real to you? Is he real to you? Then you've been keeping his commandments because you really love him because the Lord says if you love him, he'll become real to you. And Judas, not that it's curious, this is another one. Judas asked him, Lord, how is it that you will reveal yourself, make yourself real to us and not to the world? And Jesus answered, Jesus answered, if a person really loves me, if he really loves me, he will keep my word, obey my teaching. My father will love him and will come to him and make our home abode, special dwelling place with him. That's in the secret place. Anyone who does not really love me does not observe or obey my teachings. 
And the teachings which you hear and he is not mine, but comes from the Father who sent me. So this place of really loving the Lord is so important to obey his commandments when the chips are down. It's easy to put the spirit man on when everything's at peace. But it's when all hell is breaking out, when everything is coming against you, and you do, what did God say I should do in this moment? That's talking, walking the word out and handle it. That's what I always say. It doesn't matter how much you read the word. We don't know how to walk out anything. And you just teach. Like if I just teach this, oh my God, I'm getting ready to go through something. I'm going to watch and pray. Because anybody that gets in this pulpit, trust me, the word is tried. i got to know, okay, how much do I love the Lord? And if I act like a monkey, I'm going to have to say, okay, God, I don't love you that much. <laughs> I love me more than I loved you. i got to really face that and wash my own feet and say, okay, God, I need to watch and pray more. I need to repent more. I need to buy more gold. So, stand firm, therefore. We're back at Ephesians uh, 6, 10, and 18. I think we're starting at verse 14. Stand firm, therefore, having gird your loins with truth. <coughs> What does that mean? Word. Your secret places. That's the gird your loins with truth. Look at the truth about yourself. Lord, I'm a liar. Lord, I'm a stealer. Lord, help me. That's what happens when you watch and pray. God will begin to show yourself to yourself. And having put on the breastplate of righteousness, that is doing what is right in your heart when nobody's looking. Do what's right in your heart because God is always watching. Amen. And having shod your feet with the preparation of gospel of peace, walk out the word. It will give you peace. Let peace be your guide. Okay, I'm done. Huh. I mean, my computer, my thing is done. Where's the other? Thank you, Lord. Let peace be your guide. I always say this. When peace leaves, demons are afoot. Listen. When peace leaves the atmosphere, demons are afoot. That's the time to watch. Watch. Start going on alert. Something's going on. It's what happened in the car. The peace left. The smell came. The Lord was teaching us to watch. I had just heard that morning, watch and pray. When peace leaves, demons are afoot. In addition to all, because we just read above the floor that our struggle, we're in a struggle now. It's not against whoever is happening. It's against demons that are coming. It's where we're walking. In addition, take up, in addition to all, take up the shield of faith. True faith is doing the word of the Lord in the midst of the trial. That's true faith. This is the weapons of our warfare. And it will extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. So you want to know what your weapon is? The weapon of your warfare is the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit will extinguish all the arrows of the enemy. And what is the fruit of the Spirit? So I want to remind you. Love in the midst of hate. Joy in the midst of sadness. I love when Betty comes in, everybody's looking sad, her face just beams in joy. All of a sudden, joy isn't contagious. It's a weapon against the enemy. It's a weapon. This is after they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. When we watch, when we pray, when we are alert, and when things are happening to us, it's happening not because we're bad, it's happening to us because God just wants to show us what is in us. Right? So we just read that above. What gird your loins with truth. This is in me, Lord. I need it out of me. How do I get the other thing? Help me, Lord. Peace. When everything is upset and you just come in with peace, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Forbearance. To forbear in all kinds of situations, in hard situations. Forbearance. Kindness. Kindness is a weapon. Powerful of weapon in the, in the midst of meanness and anger and disturbance. Kindness, a powerful weapon. They're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds in others. We're washing their feet. 
When we have the fruit of the Spirit and we act with the fruit of the Spirit, we're washing our brothers and sisters' feet as being examples. So we got to be the first watchmen, amen? And the first prayers. Goodness in the middle of everything else being filthy. Faithfulness. Standing there being faithful. Being faithful to the Lord. Gentleness. Such a wonderful, powerful weapon. And self-control. Now, Scripture says, against such, there is no law. No law. The enemy's coming wherever there's a law. If we have anything in us that belongs to him, he gets judged by the law. So you get, and I get judged by the law. Then it says, take up the helmet of salvation. Let your thoughts do as Jesus would do at that very moment. What would he do? And the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, let your thought life walk the word. With all prayer and petitions, pray at all times in the spirit. And with this in, in view, be alert with all perseverance and petitions for all the saints. We will be tempted more than ever to deny the Lord to do our own thing. Mm. We must be alert for our own souls and attitudes or we will be like Peter and James and John and we'll run away and deny the Lord. It's just a natural thing because we're natural people. And I use the word watchmen. And uh, Isaiah 6, 62 and 6 says, I have set watchmen upon your walls, O Jerusalem, who will never hold their peace day or night, you who are his servants and by your prayers. But put the Lord in remembrance of his promises and keep not silent. And the word watchman means to hedge about. It means to circumspect, to take heed to self. Take heed to self. To keep alert, to be narrowly, to preserve, to regard, to save. So we that are watchmen, we have got to become watchmen to watch and pray. We're in the last days. Luke 21, 25, 36 through 36. There will be signs in the suns and the moon and the stars and on earth in dismay among nations, in perplexity at the roaring of the sea and the waves. Men faint and fe from fear and the expectations of things which are coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Okay, for us, we don't see that because we're in the Trump, we're in the Trump cloud right now where everything seems to be good. But in Africa, they've got locusts. They're starving. In other parts of the country, they got war. So while this scripture may not be of us that we can see it, but the Christians there are learning to watch and pray. They're learning how to pray and watch and cover their fields so that the locusts don't eat their fields but just eat the leaves so that they can just get the fruit that's there. They're learning to walk in power. God is training them now and saying that we are not going to be immune to what is happening. In China, they learn, the Christians are learning how to stand against, uh, what is that, uh, coronavirus. They're learning to stand by faith and believe the Lord. And their souls, of course, in fear, like, I like what Michael said, Michael was seeing things going on with his kids, and he was like, I was hearing the Lord say it was okay. He said, but boy, my emotions. See, his spirit was hearing, but his soul was like, oh my God, I'm hearing you, Lord, what you're saying, but Debbie looks like she's going out. My kids are, are over here. My wife isn't. Which one do I run to first? It was a trial. The Lord got him through the trial. Praise the Lord. Let's see. Let's see. And perplexities. Let's see. And things which are coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then when they will see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. But when these things begin to take place, straighten up and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawn near. Then he told them a parable. Behold the fig tree. And all of, it, all of the trees, as soon as they put forth their leaves, you see it and know yourself that it is summer is near. So also, when you see these things happen, happen, recognize the kingdom of God is near. The kingdom of God is nearer than it has ever been before. We are the generation. Oh, that's just what it says. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. We are seeing these things happen. We are the generation that's seeing it. These kids, their children, Isaiah, they're seeing these things happen. We are the generation that's seeing it. And it says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. 
Be on guard so that your hearts will not be weighed down with dis dis uh, dis dissipation and drunkness or worries of this life. In other words, the Lord said, don't get so caught up in this world. Don't get caught up in your bills and your needs and everything else like that. Because it says, and that day will come on you suddenly like a trap. We got to watch and pray. We can't be so big in America. We can, because the way we have to live with finances, we got to have a house, we got to have all these things. In the midst of that, we have to have a watching and praying spirit because it says this day is going to come upon you like a trap. And we don't want that to happen. For it will come upon all those who dwell on the face of the earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you might have strength to escape all these things that are about to take place and to stand before the Son of Man. Like never before, we have got to watch and pray, saints, like never before. And I hope that you're hearing me. I just realized that when, when Jesus was talking to his disciples, he was telling them some stuff that was going to happen. And suddenly, it was that afternoon or that evening, and that night at midnight, they came and got Jesus the one whom they loved, the one that was just giving them all kind of revelations because they weren't watching and praying. But I'm going to read to you what they learned because they learned something powerful and you can see it in their words. So you see this picture. Jesus is taken. They come. They, Jesus is resurrected because if you, you go through a hard place, you're always going to go through resurrection. That's what I wanted to tell you because Jesus didn't stay dead. He resurrected. And when he resurrected, Power came to the disciples out of result of what they went through. But listen to what they learned out of that moment of Gethsemane. James 1, 2 and 4 says, Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its perfect result, so that you may be perfect and complete and lacking nothing. He learned that in Gethsemane. He learned that through everything that they went through, through the cross, the resurrection, and then the empowerment of the Spirit. He learned, you know what? When I, when, I, when I saw Jesus go to the cross, I counted all joy so that I was not lacking anything. Peter learned in 1 Peter 1, 2 and 5, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father by sanctifying work, of the Spirit, to obey Jesus Christ and be sprinkled with his blood. May grace, may grace and peace be yours in the fullest measure. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Tell me he didn't learn that in the Garden of Gethsemane. That was like it was etched inside of his spirit. Thank you, Jesus, that you loved me, even though I betrayed you. To obtain an inheritance which is unperishable, undefiled, and will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed at this last time, is what he learned in Gethsemane. 1 John 1 through 4 says, what John learned. What was from the beginning, what we have heard and what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hand concerning the word of life. And the life was manifested and we have seen and testified and proclaimed to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. What we have seen and heard we proclaim to you so that you too may have fellowship with us. Indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. These things are right so that your joy might be complete. That's what he learned at Gethsemane and everything else that he went through successfully. So I want to share with you a picture of the process that we go through when we watch and we pray, the process is death. The Lord is saying, die to yourself. Let that old man die, that old carnal flesh of which all of us have. Yeah. Let it die. Amen. The situations or trials that are close into us, 
is highly personal. The things that we go through, the Lord that's at death, is highly personal. Great anguish and pain and confusion comes during this time. Submit to the Lord in the midst of the trouble. Go through it God's way. The place of refining. It's a refining trial that the Lord goes through. And then the next place that we go through is what Jesus went through. He was buried. Because all y'all know the story. We're going through death, burial, and resurrection. A stillness in your soul, like licking your wounds. That's not the, after you've gone through this trial. You may not have done it quite right, as what Peter did. He didn't go quite right. He went and he was it's like licking your wounds. But the Lord begins to put a spark and you begin to pray. You're in that place of burial. You start going to your secret place. You start repenting. Always, when you go through a trial, there's a resurrection. So you just don't get crucified and die. You, 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 you get crucified, you die, and then there's resurrection. And when resurrection comes, there's a new you come out. Wow, that's how you go through that trial. That's how you do that, Lord. And resurrection, faith begins to arise afresh and a new hope begins to return in your heart. We feel like you're hopeless. New heart begins. Greater faith comes. The fruit of the Spirit is now formed. This is the process. Next thing that happens is you get power. All of a sudden, you talk with authority. You know in whom you believe. At the day of Pentecost, after Peter was totally, you know, what he, what he went through, and he totally went through all that, he was the only one that stood up and said, Man, we are not drunk as, it, as it's supposed to be. Because it's the noon and the afternoon. Because everyone was speaking in tongues, and they all heard it in his own language. But he talked about Jesus going to the cross. He talked about Jesus' resurrection. What happened? He got power. Power comes when there's death, burial, resurrection inside of us. Power comes. And we come out with authority. We come out with understanding. We come out to know what we believe when we watch and we pray. So the trial brings power. You have learned to stay in prayer. Watch the way you were watched, the way you were walking with the Lord. You have turned now. You have now trained your soul to yield in the midst of the test. Yield. That's what Jesus did. He yielded in, in Gethsemane. He said, Lord, this is not going to pass unless I go through it, right? This cup is not going to pass. I got to go through it. Stop resisting the Lord. If you're in something, just keep praying. Keep on seeking his face. Resurrection is coming. Greater days are coming. You have, you have forgiven when necessary and let your soul die. You have learned to pick up your cross and follow him wherever he leads. You did not resist death of your soul, but yielded to the process and power and the ability to hear the Lord becomes greater. That's Pentecost. So we want to hear the Lord? Get with the Lord. Spend time in His presence. Saints, I really sense in the Spirit that the move of God is coming. And it's going to come in great measure. I was in prayer and um, I, I, draw, I drew what I saw. And let's see, that was... Uh, this year. And I was praying and I was saying, Lord, you know, use us, Lord. What what can we do? And suddenly from my right, I saw this. You can see that. At the raise it up. It was pure gold. It was solid, but yet it was liquid. And it was a coal of fire. And tongs, that's tongs that's on it. You haven't seen much closer. I don't know if you can see this clearly. But it was the tongs. With the tongs, it was, uh, it was a coal of fire. And I sent it to several people that we know of. I think they can, y'all can see it, right? All you stuck, I see it. You see it? Yeah, everybody sees it. It was a coal of fire. And it came from my right, which means that prophetically that, that this, is, this is a good thing. And that the Lord, a refinement was coming to his church, to his people. And it was the same thing as, the, as Passover. The Lord's going to wash our feet, saints. And he's going to cause us to wash each other's feet. 
But we got to watch and we got to pray. We got to watch for what we're being washed of. Interact with the Lord. Don't run away from the Lord. The Lord loves us. He knows it's there anyway. The circumstances are there just so that we can, he can show us that it is there. And as we, as God begins to purify us, because when I saw those coals, the scripture that came to me, came to me was the, the coals of fire that were behind the throne room of God. You know, it talks about in Ezekiel, I think the enemy walked on the coals of fire. It means that there's a holiness that's coming from, from the Lord to his church. Because his church has not understood. We just get them saved and we want to throw them out there to get other souls, which is good. It's a good thing to do. But then at the same time, we have the enemy and we've got to develop a heart within us that knows how to fight the enemy. And the more we watch, the more we pray, the more we let the Lord cleanse our feet, the more death, burial, resurrection, and power we will receive. The more power that you have, the clearer that you're able to hear the Lord. Flesh cannot hear the Lord. Our carnal nature cannot hear the Lord. But our spirit man, coming alive, sparking in the spirit, is able to hear the Lord. The more we watch, the more we pray. Yes, I'm just so amazed at some of the things that, that I see and I hadn't prayed about. And the reason is because I love people. And I see that I just, oh, well, that's just, you know, that's just a situation that they have. I'll just minister to them and, you know, just tell them to, to pray, you know, to pray about it. But time is getting critical, saints. We got to watch and we're going to pray. Because scripture says in the last days it will be a great falling away. People that love the Lord. People that worked for the Lord. But they had prayed. See, it's more important to do the works of the Lord rather than to seek the Lord. That's what we've taught people. No, it's more important to seek the Lord. The Lord spoke to me when I was a young woman. He said, I would say, Lord, I want to grow. I want to grow. And the Lord said, nothing grows fast but a weed. And he said, you, don't, you can't minister to nobody until you first learn to minister to me. That's what Christians need to be taught. First minister to the Lord. First get in your prayer closet. First seek his face. And when the Lord did that as a young woman, I would seek the face of the Lord all the time. I was always in prayer. I'd come home from school and I'd spend hours in prayer and seeking the Lord. What was I doing? The Lord was training me to watch and pray. If you will pray, if you would get in your secret place, if you pray every moment. I mean, sometimes I'm driving in the car and I'm just praying and seeking the Lord. And this is just a call in my spirit as a watchman, watching. The Lord is saying, we have got to pray. He will give us something to do. But if we don't pray, we will send ourselves doing things that are idle. That the enemy don't care that we get up and do all these different things. He don't care. Okay, go do it. Go do it. But you haven't been perfected. I'm sure Judas went and hold, did a, I bet, I'm sure he was among the double people that went out, was doing miracles and healing people. Judas was a part of that. But the enemy had a plan. The plan was in it that Judas loved money. So he sold the Lord for $21.60. What? A sandwich and a cup of coffee. Or a sandwich and a soda in our generation. I don't know what he could have bought back there, probably a lot more stuff. But the whole point is, it was nothing to him once the enemy came off of him. Because it said that when Jesus gave him that morsel of bread, it said immediately Satan entered into him. That was fellowship. When Jesus gave him bread, he was fellowshipping with Jesus. Jesus was communing with him. And immediately said in John that Satan entered him. And Jesus said, Go do what you got to do quickly. We don't want to be those that deny the Lord like Peter. We don't want to be like those that run away because it got too hot. Might come a day that they say, are you a Christian? Yeah, you're a Christian. Then we're going to persecute you because we love to be politically correct. We've got to stop being politically correct. We've got to love Jesus more than anything. Really love him. Do his work. <clears throat> Watch and pray, saints. Watch and pray. It's watching over your own spirit, man. 
Because things will come, and like I said, things that happen are highly personal to you. It's intimate to you. What happened to Jesus was highly personal in the garden. He didn't have nobody to help him. It was him and Jesus. It's going to be you and Jesus. Watch and pray. Watch and pray, saints. And I know I'm probably going to walk this message out, so I'll be in my secret place a whole bunch just next week. I'll be living in my secret place so I can live this message out and be good. Teamwork can give me an A grade. Honey, you did real good. You had the fruit of the spirit. <laughs> Every moment. You walk in love. You walk in peace and patience. Because <laughs> if I minister it, gotta do it. i got to be the first one that does it, right? Because otherwise it's hypocrisy. I'm telling you something to do, and I'm not doing it myself. <laughs> right? So what is that? Pointed thing. i got four pointed at me and one at you. So we're going to walk this thing out. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, I know that I know that I know, Lord, that you're telling your church to watch and pray, Lord. We are in the hour, Father, of crucifixion. Many of your children right now, at this very moment, Father, are being crucified by words and crucified by pain, Father, crucified by circumstances, Lord. Father, as the law comes, Lord, and they get buried, Father, just a law, Lord God. That your resurrection power and faith is going to rise up in them, Lord. Resurrection power is going to come, Lord. And Father, with power, they will speak your word, Lord, because they learned in their death that it's Jesus and Jesus alone. It's you, Jesus. It's you, Jesus. And with power and authority, they will speak, Lord, because they've learned the ways of the Father. They've learned to walk with you. They've learned to lean on you. Father, they have learned, Father, to wash their feet and let you wash their feet and wash away the enemy, Father, that they can walk in new life, Father, and their feet is covered with the gospel, Lord. And everywhere they walk, Lord, is the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the gospel of life. Because we've learned to walk in life, Father. We're prepared, Father, to do your will, Lord. So, Father, we praise you for the cross. We praise you for the burial, Lord. We praise you for the resurrection, Father. And we praise you for the power to overcome all. Father, in Jesus' name, knowing that you're making a new man out of us, Lord, a new woman out of us, Lord, new authority out of us, Lord. We're moving with you, Lord, in authority, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord. So, Father, we do it your way, Father, and we obey you, Lord, in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Watch and pray, saints. This is a prayer for those that don't quite know the Lord and maybe never have met Him. He works better on the inside than He does on the outside. So let's ask Him to come into our hearts greater and deeper and wider. Lord, I don't know You, but I want to know You, Lord. And Lord, I ask You to come inside my heart, to dwell with me, to live with me, Lord. Lord, I ask you to forgive me for all of my sins, all of my shortcomings, everything I didn't know, Lord. I just ask you to cleanse me from it. Come into my heart, Lord. Come dwell with me. I want to be a part of your kingdom. Lord, I don't know what to do or how to do it, but here is my voice lifting it up to you, Lord. I ask you, Lord, to come in. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me from all iniquities. Come into my heart, Lord. I want to be your friend, and I want you to be my friend. Come in, Lord Jesus. Now, if you prayed this prayer today, the Lord just heard your voice. He hears the weakest call, the weakest heart. He has come into your heart. Seek for a local church. Continue to pray, and he will lead you. God bless you. Jesus loves you.